Um, you are in the Drush session, uh, traditional Drush session. We've done this at all the DrupalCons for some time now. Um, there is always new stuff happening in Drush, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about again here today. Um, the version of Drush that we've all been working on is Drush 7. Uh, so here we are, Drush 7, what's new? A little bit about me. Um, I am a longtime uh, Drupal core contributor um, since the very first year of the project. Um, some of the stuff that I have made in the past, um, the Devel module, organic groups, and now the Drush project. Um, or groups.drupal.org was a, a site that I founded, um, and I was a founding member of the Drupal Association. Um, and just a shout out to all the self-taught programmers out there. Um, I'm one of you. Um, <clears throat> shout out to all the non-self-taught too. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, I'm the research and development director at Acquia as well. I forgot that I took a little extra time with uh, animations here. Um, and now my thing won't advance because I got too clever. Um, okay, so uh, the agenda I think is going to come up in a second after the bat's done doing his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this bat to do his thing. Um, that's the extent of my graphic design talent. Um, we're going to go over some of the commands um, that are um, part of Drush 7 that you might not be familiar with. Um, I think there's lots of super handy stuff in here. Um, and not quite, oh, I, I blew my, uh, <laughs> I guess if you like that, you can give feedback now. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Um, can people see the terminal? Actually, it's handy, right, if the window goes higher. I think I've learned that over the years. Um, okay. So... Here I am uh, at the terminal um, in OS OSX. Um, I'm in a Drupal 8 site, okay? That uh, will matter later. Um, and uh, I just want to put a shout out for the topic command, okay? Um, this one's not actually new in Drush 7, but I think not enough people know about it, so I just want to make sure that you read all the awesome docs that uh, the Drush maintainers and contributors have made, okay? Whoops. Um, Drush topic is a little hard to see at this resolution, um, but it gives you a chooser of 25 articles that we have written or pieces of documentation we've written. Um, all of the global options that are available in Drush is the first one. Um, that's the one I use the most. Um, if you want to customize your Bash RC, there's a topic about that. Um, if you're Connecting to your server through Bastion, there's one there. So there's just a plethora of docs um, that Drush has uh, provided you to learn more about this product. Um, a lot of these are available as text files in the examples directory and in the docs directory inside of Drush. Um, so if you prefer reading them that way, that's fine too. Um, but we give you a command to read them, all right? Um, Okay. Um, let's start off with uh, Boris, okay? Um, Boris is a separate open source project. Um, technically, it's called a PHP REPL, um, which is a shell where you can play around uh, with a fully bootstrapped Drupal and run commands. Um, so let's just take a look instead of talking about it. Um, so I typed in dr space php right there, 
Um, I've aliased DR to Drush on my system, okay, to save a few characters. Um, and PHP is an alias, uh, a command alias, for the command uh, core-cli. So either core-cli or PHP, they both do the same thing. Um, and uh, now you see that my prompt changed to something called self, okay? Um, so I'm now operating uh, in a fully bootstrapped Drupal 8, okay? And I can um, do things there. So let's look at what I can do. Uh, well, I can run uh, any function that comes with Drupal. All right, so there I ran this function, views get enabled views, okay? And I got, um, I believe this is an array, it would tell me at the top, uh, yep, it's an array of all of my enabled views, okay? The items in the array are um, entity view objects, okay? Views config entities. Um, so it handles like complex uh, types as well as just arrays. Um, If you actually care to look at the guts of a given view, um, you can do that too. Um, that didn't work out for me. Undefined constant. I think these are, that was my text editor not helping me. Okay, um, so this is a view object. Um, a single one called the front page. All right, so um, this is a shell. It, uh, we have our history inside the shell that we can go, um, you know, go backwards with. Um, so it's a really quite a functional shell. Um, I want to point out that it works um, on Drupal 7 sites also. Um, so that looks like this, and I had a couple commands I wanted to show you. User load. I'm not in the shell. You guys knew that. Okay, so there's a user object, all right. Um, you can save variables and use the variables later, you know. Okay. Um, so you can load user number one, um, change a property and then save user one. That kind of stuff is a little easier in Drupal 8 because we have like really nice methods on our entities now. Um, so uh, that's using the Boris shell locally. Um, this works with site aliases also. So you can um, open up a shell on a remote site too. So, um, provided that you have um, a recent version of Drush on the remote side also, um, a lot like the SSH command, which drops you into the remote side, or the uh, SQL CLI command, which drops you into MySQL somewhere remotely, um, this does too. Okay, so you can drop into a shell on a remote site. Okay, so um, let's uh, hang out in Drupal 8 for a little while and talk about the views commands. Okay. I have a command views-list. Um, this will list uh, all of the views that you have on your Drupal 8 site. All right. Um, it wraps a lot because of my font size, but um, here they all are. You can see their names and descriptions. You can see their um, status and any tags that are associated with that, okay? Um, uh, 
you can look at the help. Um, and this command runs a lot like um, pm-status, which is to say that you can uh, filter the list for just ones that are enabled. Um, you can filter for certain tags. Um, you, you can use all of the usual output format stuff to get it as a CSV or a JSON uh, if you're trying to script stuff and move all your views from one place to another. Um, you can do that uh, with views list, okay? Um, so uh, let's look at views execute. Um, view execute. No. Views execute. Okay, so I don't have any promoted nodes, so I didn't get anything there. Um, well, so uh, you might be wondering what executing a view could possibly mean um, at the command line. Um, so uh, the kinds of things that you can do are dash dash count, which is how many results are coming back for this view. Um, which can be pretty handy. Um, you can get the view in any alternative format you want. Um, okay, so the results can come back in JSON and CSV um, using the dash dash format option. Um, dash dash rendered is kind of cool. Um, that will give you uh, the HTML. Um, so it's a themed view. Um, and you can go ahead and put that wherever you need to. Um, and the show admin links flag just uh, takes some of the cruft off of uh, the view. All right. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the configuration commands because they're pretty sweet. Um, the configuration commands are um, command line way of interacting with the configuration management system in Drupal 8. Uh, also called the CMI system. Uh, if you guys aren't yet familiar with that, um, that is a, uh, a new version of the variables table from prior versions of Drupal. Um, what we did there was we took everything that used to be a variable and either made it configuration or made it state. Um, things like the last time cron ran went into the state system. Um, and a lot of other things uh, like module configuration kind of stuff um, are in CMI. Um, so there's lots of uh, commands for working with that CMI system. Let's take a look. Okay. Um, so there's lots and lots of config objects in Drupal 8, okay? Um, Here's one that uh, we commonly use, system.site. That's where you change the site name, okay, among other things. So, okay, uh, I ran the command um, config dash edit system site, okay? So uh, what config edit does is it goes and queries into Drupal and asks Drupal, um, I need the current con active configuration for the namespace system.site, okay? And um, that's currently stored in the database, but that's really swappable, and um, you know, Dresh honors those swaps because we go through the CMI API. Um, and so uh, we got that data out of Drupal and we saved it to a temporary YAML file, okay? And uh, we opened up the editor that's currently um, declared in your environment for editing. So um, config edit is really quite useful um, for getting stuff that's otherwise hidden in your database, serialized, not particularly easy to edit, um, pulls it out into your editor for editing. Um, and there's more. So let's just change the name of um, the name property in system.site to DrupalCon. 
Okay? When I save, um, when I save and close this file, um, the drush command uh, starts up again, and it will do a config write using the Drupal API and actually write your, your new object to the um, to Drupal, okay, to the active configuration. Um, so that's a pain in the neck to do all that stuff by hand, and config edit really makes it simple for you to do that. Okay, so um, if we do config edit again on system.site, hopefully this will work, um, and we'll see our new name. That, that proves that the round trip worked, okay? Um, hopefully you guys can see this. The name property is DrupalCon now, okay? Um, so that's config edit. Um, it's, uh, it, it used to be um, only slightly necessary um, because Drupal stored active configuration in YAML files. Um, so you could at least see them and figure out how to edit them and, and um, bring them back in. Now Drupal moved that to the database, so really um, this is the best way to, to change configuration, uh, or the best way without going through the Drupal web UI, which you know is fine, but it's slow. Um, okay, so that's config edit. Okay, so here's a slightly longer command, uh, drush config dash set. All right, so um, there are times when you're working in scripts uh, where you don't want the interactive editor to make changes. You want to just slam in a new value. Um, in uh, prior versions of Drupal, you had the variable set command or vset in order to do this kind of thing. Um, config dash set is equivalent for Drupal 8, okay? Uh, the variable commands are are unavailable on Drupal 8. That system's gone. Um, okay, so uh, drush config dash set, and then the namespace you want to operate in, uh, system.site, and then the key that you want to change, and then the value. So we want to change the name from DrupalCon to Austin. Um, I haven't actually done this in a while. I believe it gives me a confirmation if all goes well. Do you want to update the name key, uh, the, the name key in system.site? I do. And um, might as well show you this other command. Config get um, is a way, it does what config edit does, but it doesn't bring it into the editor. It just shows you in the shell what the YAML representation is for a certain um, a certain config object. Okay, so uh, here you can see the results of config get system site. Um, the second property's name, its value is now Austin. Okay, so um, we just saw how you use uh, config dash set and config dash get to set um, values in your site. Okay. Um, so the next uh, set of config commands are config export and config import. Um, I think you have to be a little bit more familiar with Drupal 8 in order to appreciate all that those guys do. Um, but uh, let me just start showing and, and I'll talk about it. Okay, so... Um, the first command is drush config export. Um, here I'm getting a confirm saying that the current contents of my export directory are gonna be deleted, okay? And then it's got a super long path that tells me exactly what directory is gonna get emptied out. Um, of note in this long path, um, and this is a Drupal thing, not a drush thing. Um, by default, um, Drupal stores, or Drupal places the staging directory in site's default files, okay? And then it's got this long secret um, path for the two configuration directories. 
Um, and then it's slash staging, which is to say we're exporting to a staging directory. Um, yes, it's okay to empty that directory. Um, configuration successfully exported. Okay. So what I want to do is actually um, show you this directory. Okay. I don't know how you increase the font size in Finder. Um, okay, so um, basically when you do an export out of Drupal's CMI system, you get a pile of YAML files. You get every configuration object that Drupal knows about exported and represented in YAML, okay? So um, we could take a look at these, um, and they wouldn't be all that interesting, but it's the same kind of thing we saw before. This is core.extension.yaml, um, and I think it might hold module weights or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, so um, now I have all of my configuration um, objects. Why would I want to do that? Um, so the reason why um, you use export and import is to propagate configuration changes to your staging environment. Um, so you typically would check them into Git, okay? Then you move uh, the tag in your staging directory uh, or the branch to the new code, um, verify that everything looks good, and then cut a new tag and change your production to run that new tag. So um, the CMI system exists and the export import system exists um, so that you can put your configuration into code and move it through the different environments, okay? Um, it's kind of a complicated topic. Um, I encourage you guys to watch a uh, video that is on the Acquia website. Um, if you look for um, Drupal 8 configuration um, and Acquia, I think you'll find this blog post by Peter Wollenen, um, and then like a uh, add-on piece by me after that um, that talks about how to stage your, your configuration in Drupal 8. And these commands are featured, okay? Um, but I, I do want to show you um, what config import is all about. Um, so uh, we have that pile of YAML files in my staging directory. Um, we can make changes in those um, YAML files. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, okay. Um, the flood limit parameter, I change it from five to 10. I think flood has to do with like dosing your site with too many contact submissions. Um, now if I do drush config dash import, drush is going to um, submit to Drupal all of those uh, files and um, before it does so, it looks and um, asks you for confirm. Um, do you really want to change contact.settings? Um, and I believe uh, this is the general um, output of that confirmation. Um, it tells you which objects has changed um, or been added and removed. All right. And you confirm and you can keep going. Um, you can even do the same thing with... Uh, there's an option for seeing a diff. Oh, dash dash preview. Let's let's see how that works. Um, so if all goes well, I'll see a diff of my proposed change, not just a summary table of what's been added, updated, and removed. Yeah. Okay. Here's a unified diff. I'm going from limit five to limit ten. Okay, and uh, that looks good to me. I want to import um, everything that's in my stage directory, uh, namely that um, that limit change. Uh, 
Okay, got a success message at the end. Um, all right, so that's the set of uh, config commands, okay? Um, we saw um, list, we saw um, set and get, um, and import and export, all right? There's a, a lot of great primitives there for uh, working with configuration. Um, and uh, there's even, if you look at um, config export, um, it has a, a way to automatically start a git check-in right after that. Um, so I encourage you guys to uh, use these config commands when you start working with Drupal 8. Okay, um, another Drupal 8 command, um, migrate-manifest, all right? Uh, Drupal 8, you might have heard um, for the first time, has a migrate module in core, okay? So the traditional um, update.php major version thing is gone, uh, replaced with migrate module. Um, so a very basic um, CLI support for migrate modules in Drush core. Okay, um, I think the other migrate commands that you've been used to will be in a new project called Migrate Plus, which doesn't have much in it quite yet. Um, so this is the migrate-manifest command. Um, here you see me um, passing a database URL. Okay, um, this database URL is pointing at MySQL and specifically at my Drupal 6 database. Um, it's passing the verbose option, and it's passing a path to the manifest.yaml file, okay? Um, let's just go ahead and run it, um, see how it goes. Um, I'll tell you uh, exactly what it's doing. Um, that uh, database URL that I passed in um, is pretty important. That tells Drupal 8 where my Drupal 6 database is located, okay? Remember, this is actually um, how I would go about upgrading my site from Drupal 6 to Drupal 8, all right? And similarly, um, if I had a Drupal 7 site, it would work um, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, all right? So you clearly have to pass the database URL um, in order for the migrate module to be able to get at your old data, okay? And you do that um, just with that DB URL option. Um, the, the only argument I passed in was manifest.yml. Um, that is the path to uh, my manifest file. All right, um, since uh, I just put in the file name manifest.yml, the assumption for Drush was that that is in my root Drupal directory, okay? Um, the contents of manifest.yml are here. All right, it is um, a extremely simple um, file uh, with one comment at the top and then a bunch of um, items. Um, these items here, D6 underscore filter format, uh, D6 underscore user, that stuff um, is a listing of what uh, Drupal 8 calls migrations. Um, so we're basically just saying, I want to run the filter migration, the user migration, a bunch of user picture migrations and the user role migration, okay? That's what this manifest is about. And it's actually a migrate module will sort these according to the dependencies that have been declared for each of these. So you don't really have to worry in a manifest file about getting the order right. Um, it's really about what you want to have run. Um, manifest files and manifests are a Drupal 8 concept. It's not really a Drush thing. Um, but uh, the first command that got implemented was migrate manifest, okay? Um, if you look up the um, docs for the migrate module in Drupal 8, you will find a nice page about manifests and you can play around with this stuff. Um, so, um, you know, just to be clear, what happened after I run migrate manifest? Um, it connected to my Drupal 6 database, um, in particular the filter table and the user and the user picture table. 
Um, and it uh, copied and translated all of that data into whatever Drupal 8 expects, okay? The storage for these things all changed, um, but the migrations that Drupal 8 has declared knows how to convert Drupal 6 data to Drupal 8, okay? Um, the um, user pictures, of course, are a little more complicated. They consist of data, um, which is in the database. They also consist of um, files in your files directory. Um, and the migration was smart enough to pull along the files in addition to the data. So, you know, if I were to look at my files directory in Drupal 8, um, I would also have all those user pictures. My file managed table would be properly populated. So these are like nice, happy, clean users with user pictures in Drupal 8. Um, okay, uh, I want to uh, cover one more topic and um, then uh, we'll just do, go to Q&A. Um, so uh, under the hood, uh, Drush has made a bunch of changes in 7. Um, namely, we depend on Composer now. Composer is a great uh, open source PHP project um, that's become really popular. Um, the way Drush uses it, you, we use Composer in a couple different ways. Um, the first thing is that Drush depends on a few other projects, um, and the way those get fetched uh, has changed. Um, for a long time, we've depended on a pair project called Console Table. Console Table is the thing that gives you pretty tables at the command line. So when you list out your projects um, or your watchdog messages or pending updates and stuff, uh, database updates. Uh, those are all tables. They're done by console table. Um, and uh, prior versions of Drush would go fetch this stuff um, right the first time you ran Drush. Um, and we had our own routines for how to go fetch that. That's moved into Composer now. Okay. The second way we use um, Composer is we use its class autoloader. All right, so after fetching these projects, um, Composer writes uh, an autoloader um, that now Drush can include uh, during its bootstrap, and now all of these classes can be autoloaded. Okay, so um, this is just a, a more clean way of loading code than the traditional um, require and include statements. Okay, so um, the way that affects like general users of Drush is that uh, you install it differently now. Um, you can install it the old way if you're that kind of guy, um, but uh, here's the composer way. What I'm showing here um, is the home page of Drush on GitHub, okay? So on our home page at the bottom, it shows the contents of README. Uh, so in the README, you get to a section called install or update using composer, all right? The first step is to install Composer globally. Um, if you've never done that before, you're going to want to do that. Um, so I uh, click that link, and now I have the global install instructions for Composer. It's super, super easy. Okay, it's two commands that you can copy and paste: a curl command to go fetch it, okay, and run the the install script using PHP, okay. Um, if you care to separate these two and actually look and see what the installer does, you can. Um, that would be the absolute safest um, paranoid thing to do. But um, everyone else just does it like this. Um, and then uh, you're going to MV move the far file into um, uh, someplace that's always accessible. Okay, so in this case, they recommended user local bin. Um, you can put it into any place on your path. Okay. Um, so what, after you've run those two commands, what you have, you can run the composer command um, using any user and from anywhere in your, um, in your shell, all right? Okay, so uh, after you've installed composer, that really is not hard. Um, if you didn't do it already, here are some instructions for um, adding composer's global bin directory onto your system path, okay? Um, 
the point of doing that is that then uh, composer projects can um, composer projects like Drush can be called with just the word Drush and not the full path. Okay. Next off, um, there's some, some instructions for how to uh, install different versions of of um, Drush. The second one is Drush 7, um, which is the one we're talking about today. Um, and so here's a copy and paste for you. Composer global require. Um, and then uh, Drush, Drush slash Drush. And then dev dash master is the convention they have for just install the very latest version, um, unreleased version. Okay. Um, so after you do that, um, you have uh, a Drush. Uh, that's ready to go in Composer's global bin um, directory, and if you've added that to your path, then you can run Drush, okay, uh, without any path in front of it. All right, so um, this is a hurdle that, like, some people never get over. Some people grumble and then get over it. Um, I encourage you to be part of the people who grumble but still get over it. Um, or if you want to smile through it, that's good, too. Um, but uh, Composer is definitely the way that the PHP world is going, so I encourage you guys to go check it out. Um, we now are using uh, the class autoloader uh, to uh, automatically discover all of our, test, um, our tests in um, Drush. We have a, like a pretty strong unit test suite uh, that runs on PHP unit. Um, every commit gets tested by Travis.ci. Um, and uh, we're also using that composer autoloader uh, for the SQL commands and soon for the user commands. Um, so we're definitely using more OO and autoloading in Drush 7 than ever before. Um, the Boris shell that we talked about at the beginning, um, that's fetched as a dependency by composer when you install. All right, so that's kind of another way that we're using composer. Um, all right, so I guess I'll open up now for questions uh, or comments or experiences you've had with Drush you want to share. Um, I encourage you guys to go to the mics, which um, should be in the aisles there. Or in the middle, I see. Okay. So are you adopting semantic versioning, and especially with the changes for 7, is there a plan to release point increments that potentially add new Drush commands? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have already adopted semantic versioning. So um, the last Drush 5 release that I made, which was just a few days ago, if any of you are still using 5, um, was 5.11.0. Um, the, the most recent 6 is 6.3.0. Um, and 7 doesn't have a stable release yet. But yeah, we're, we've changed our numbering. At the same time we went to GitHub, we also adopted semantic versioning. And um, we do sneak in new version, new features during a minor version also and just bump that second digit. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I, uh, if I missed it, but I'm not clear on how the manifest YAML file gets generated, if that's done using um, the migrate module on the old Drupal install, how does that work? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, the manifest file gets generated by you, as far as I know. Um, so you open up your text area and you just make a list of migrations that you want to run. Um, so nothing particularly generates it for you. Um, maybe there's going to be some contrib Drupal 8 stuff that generates the manifests based on all of the stuff you're running. I really don't know. Uh, if anyone in the room knows, they can come up to the mic and, and educate us. But uh, as far as I know, that's just something that you do. Okay. Well, thank you again. I love Drush, so I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, echo that. Thanks for your talk today and your work on Drush. Drush is really cool. Um, my, my question is uh, pretty simple. Is there, are there any changes to the system for declaring Drush aliases in version 7? Uh, so far, there's no changes to the to the site aliases. Um, I have been thinking for a while that um, we should go away from the P 
PHP style declaration of aliases and make them YAML files. Um, and there would be a Drush hook to adjust your aliases after, um, after they've been declared in YAML. So you would essentially be able to do everything that you could do today, like dynamically generate aliases or put in placeholders um, using PHP. You can do that in the hook. Um, but there would also be like straight YAML files that could be more easily programmatically read um, and shared. So there's sort of um, wished for changes in aliases, but so far we haven't had any, you know, which has its own niceness. They're backward compatible and you don't really have to worry about it. Thank you. Sure. So two questions. Uh, since you've been vendoring and through Composer, is there any kind of scope or plan to refactor Drush on top of Symphony console component? And second question is, do you ever plan to release Drush as like a FAR? Um, I think that uh, I'm really warmed up already to using console, the Symphony console component. Um, so people who are excited about that, um, let's start talking in the um, Drush issue queue and designing that. Um, there is an open issue with a fair amount of discussion in it already called Leverage Symphony Console. Um, so you guys can read up on that and, and jump in and participate. Um, we, uh, within the last week, uh, adopted the process component, Symphony Process, which is about um, execing things uh, from PHP. Um, the Drush commands that have done that in the past are Drush shell exec, um, and some similar ones, Drush Invoke Process. Um, so, so far the use of um, process has been in the test suite, but I think that we're gonna look into how the back end can start using process. Um, and so that's kind of the, you know, the baby steps into the Symphony component land. Um, but yeah, I think that console makes sense. You know, the, there's lots of ways to adopt console and you can adopt it fully and halfway and we'll have to figure out all the different uh, where we stop with with console. Um, the way you, you declare commands has totally changed um, so we may or may not adopt that fluent API that that console uses. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to start using it. You had another half question there. Yeah, do you ever plan to release Drush as a, a far? It might maybe make the barrier to running like Composer update or Composer install a little lower? Yeah. I haven't given that much thought. Um, I guess I haven't used many FAR projects yet, so, or if I do, I like alias them to regular files like the Composer does, and so I'm, in, I'm interested in it. Like if anyone wants to work with me on that, I'd, I'd be happy to look at it and get excited about it, but I probably wouldn't work on that myself. I'll file an issue. Oh, great. All right, thanks, Dave. Okay. Hi, uh, thanks for your session. Uh, my question is related to the configuration commands. Uh, so I, if I understand correctly, the configurations are saved for each of the languages, right? Based on the language, you can save the configuration. So when you're editing a specific property, can you, are you, able to do it based on the language, or is it a global update that you're doing? Um, so I don't know is my answer to that. Um, it, it might just work depending on how languages get specified. If they are like different configuration objects, like if it's en.system.site, then it will all just work. Um, if there's some other way to specify the the exact configuration object with language that you need to uh, update, then I guess the config commands would want to become language aware. I mean, that's definitely something they need to do before Drupal 8 is released, is be able to be language aware. I just don't know if there's zero work to do or more than that. Uh, one more question. So that configuration management tool also provides the export and import capability, right? So, so this is an alternate of that, or do you say that, would you say that, is there any, like, should, should we use Drush export import config, or should we use a configuration management interface capability? I think that um, you can use whichever one you're more comfortable with, but if you're comfortable using Drush, 
you know, the end product is the same. You get a pile of YAML files in your staging directory when you, Im when you export. And when you import, it takes whatever's there and puts it into the active configuration store. So it really doesn't matter. It's wh whatever you're trying to do and whatever is faster for you and more comfortable. So would Dress be faster than, do you think? Uh, I think the, most it? people in here would say it's faster, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. Sure. Yes. This is not a question. It's more related to the console component. So there's another developer called David Flores and myself. We just kind of create a project. So as you can see, the triple R slash project slash console. We just kind of have this coming component you know, working on. So we, let's let's talk about it. Also, there's a, there's a, I think I found an issue also in you know, in triple R. Right. Yeah, I think I saw that too. So yeah, you have some success working with Symphony Console, and yeah, your expertise would be appreciated in getting um, getting Drush to use that. I mean, I know that. Um, Pantheon's command line tool uses Symphony Console. Um, Commerce Guys, their new pa uh, platform product uses Console. So I think that people who are building modern um, PHP command line tools are using this thing. So um, Dress should use it too. Uh, any other questions or uh, tips you want to share with others about Dress? All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. Oh, there's one more in the back, so you you can use the mic. Some people will want to hear it. I'm sure. Oh, awesome! Thanks. All right, that's it. <laughs>